So in this video, we're going to be talking about the Flywoo motors. To be exact, the toothpick size motors right here. Now, I got this care package from Geek Buying and Flywoo uh, to test out these toothpick motors because they've heard I'm doing toothpick testing. Uh, so they sent me their low KV-1103 and their high KV-1103. So the low KV is 7,650 KV and the high KV is a 10,000. Uh, if you don't know this, the low KV, which is the 7,000 KV, 7,600 KV, will run a 2 and a 3S. And I've also did the thrust test, which we're going to get into right now. Now, for the high KV, you can only run 2S. If you run 3S, you have high probability of absolutely burning the thing. So keep that in mind. So through testing these on my thrust stand, uh, you've probably seen it before. I've designed a new custom mount for it to test these toothpick motors. Uh, what I found out is that these motors, especially the low KV, is the most powerful toothpick motor I've tested so far. And it's most efficient at its top end throttle, both of them, the low and the high KV. Now, the other motors that I've tested were like the iFlight 10,000 KV and then also the Happy Model and the Full Speed. Uh, all of those motors were efficient towards the mid throttle range, which is where you're flying most of the time. However, these motors are significantly more powerful and they have significant, not significantly more efficiency towards the top end, but just more efficiency towards the top end of the throttle, at least for the prop that I was using, which will also be linked down below. So will everything here. Now, another thing that you've probably seen already that I've showed from Flywoo is they've created race wire with LEDs for toothpicks or micro size. So you get this package which gives you enough for five, you know, toothpicks, which is really cool. I've already used the one I've tested it on my thrust stand and uh, it works really great. You get them all kinds of different colors here. So that's really cool. Now, the packaging, before we get into more specs, the packaging is really great. And the motors, the motor wires that they come with are 160 millimeters long. That is huge. It's bigger than any micro you're ever going to. Uh, it's long, The wire basically is longer than this one here. So it's, it's, the wire is like that long. So I'll show you right now. Now, it doesn't come with a connector at the end. Now, this is important because uh, some all-in-one crazy bee boards have that connector to plug in the motor, but they do provide it in the packaging, which is really nice that they've done that, actually. So if we open one of the boxes here, and here's the motor. You get the motor just like this, and you get some screws, and you also get the connector in there. So hopefully you guys will see that. That's the connector that will go into the crazy bee boards that you will possibly end up needing to use. Now, what's really cool... However, these I still can't find any, any link for them. They just sent them to me. Maybe they're prototypes. But what's really cool with these, instead of having to, you know, extend, for example, you had a crazy V board that takes this connector. So instead of having to extend the wires or connect the wires together from the motor and the connector, you can just put this guy in the middle and this way it'll protect the motor wire and also give it some LEDs. However, it will reduce efficiency because obviously there's more, a little bit more current going through to the LED, uh, uh, which increases its overall uh, power draw so it's not going to be as efficient but slightly less I'll do some testing on these to see how much less efficient they become but overall they protect your motor wires and they, they add a little bit of weight also you got to keep that in mind they're not that heavy they're pretty tiny like really really tiny this camera is not going to pick it up because it's not my main camera um, but yeah overall the packaging is really great and they sell for 13 bucks so they're not super super expensive and it's just within the range of everything and i'll have them linked down below also so now let's pull up the sheet here and take a look at their uh their performance now it's very difficult for me to graph everything i just couldn't find the nicest graph in order to do it so i left them in tables so we can kind of see them and uh, let me open that up right now and let's just take a look at full throttle real quick so we're going to take a look at the iFlight 10,000 kv now these tests here were done on a 2shv very important 2shv so full throttle was pulling 118 grams for the iFlight. For the Flywoo, it was pulling 127 grams. So it is uh, so far the most powerful. So you know how I told you they're more efficient towards their top end? And what we see here is when the iFlight was pulling 118 grams, it was using 8.10 amps. Now, if we look at the Flywoo, it was 127 grams. So that's around, what is that, 289? 9 grams more of thrust, and it's using about half an amp less of uh, current which is really great this is what i was telling you about so 50 percent throttle we had we could say roughly 40 grams on the iFlight pulling around two amps and we can see that the flywheel was doing around the same thing but using more amperage here by uh, 100 milliamps a little bit more 150 milliamps more 
than the iFly. And if we take a look at the full speed, it was pulling 33 grams at 1.5 amps. So the full speed and what I've noticed is the full speed and the happy model are the most efficient towards their mid-range throttle, which is really great because that's where you're flying most of the time. And um, you can kind of see that here. But then again, you can see that the Flywoo is the more powerful motor. Now, if we go down to the low KV version of the Flywoo here and comparing it with the other low KV I've ever, ever tested, which was the Happy Model 1102 8.5 K, 8,500 KV. So we see with the Flywoo, we get around 16 grams more thrust, but it is using a bit more power here. Now, if we go down to 50% throttle, we see some differences, which is they're kind of identical. But again, the, the Happy Model is pulling a lot less but it's also giving a lot less thrust as you can tell. So 26 grams here for the Happy Model, pulling around one amp. And the Flywoo is 31 grams of thrust at 1.16 amps. Now it's a 100 milliamp difference here, but you do get more power. So it is definitely more powerful. Not by much, but it does count. Every single gram counts on these micro quadcopters. Now this is where it gets interesting, which is the 3S on the low kv motors which is again the happy model and the flywheel this is the flywheel 7650 kv so by far this is the most powerful micro toothpick motor i've tested the toothpicks class type motors here it is by far the most powerful as you can tell it's 162 grams at roughly seven and a half amps which is insane because when you look at the happy model here we're getting 127 grams and we're pulling about the same amperage here uh which is which is really great. So if you want powerful motors, then the Flywoo are really good motors here. Now, if we take a look again at the 50% throttle, which is this right here, uh, we see that the Happy Model was giving us 46 grams while the Flywoo was giving us 11 grams more. And we can also see that we're pulling a lot less here and we're pulling a lot more on the Flywoo. But when you think about it, I think the efficiency is just about the same, but the Flywoo is a bit more powerful. So we might be even flying less than 50% throttle and we're probably pulling roughly around the same amperage. Uh, so it's a, it's really interesting here. Now I did, or I did set up a quadcopter with the low KV flywheel because this got me really excited here to be able to run the 2S and the, the 3S version because the low KV can do that. And we can tell that if, when I, if I run it on the 2S, each motor will give me roughly 100 grams of thrust. And when I run it on 3S, each motor can give me 162 grams of thrust, which is quite a lot actually. That is pretty impressive. Because here, if you take a look at it, when you're running on a 3S, at around 75% throttle, you're getting the full 100% throttle of a 2S on there. That's in a perfect world. And um, yeah, it should be pretty interesting. So I have set this up, which I will go and be flying very soon. And I also do have the Mumbo motors, which I'll also be testing on the channel. So I've set this up on the iFly. I burnt the original iFly motors, so I put a 3S and they were 10,000 kV. So I don't know why I did that, but yeah, they burned on the first flight. So that's why I'm telling you, don't put 3S on high KV or you'll burn it. Um, I've done that on the thrust stand. I've double checked that work and I've also done it in the real world. So keep that in mind. Anything above, I would say 9,500 KV, don't put a 3S. Uh, you can, but you'd run a really high risk of burning it. And uh, anything below 8,000 KV or 9,000 KV, then you, well, I always preferably say 8,000 KV. You could put a 3S on there and, and get away with it. Um, but always check your motor temperatures, which is really important. So, uh, these are my current results. The flight footage will be upcoming very soon. And I'll keep compiling this data and just let me know what you guys think down in the comment section. And I'll have links to everything down below. Thanks to uh, Geek Buying for providing them and for uh, Flywoo for also providing these. They also provide me with a bunch of their frames and uh, ESC and motors, and like a low KV build, which I'll do on the channel here, like a sponsored. Uh, flywheel build so if anyone purchased that it'll they'll know how to set everything up if you get that whole combo with the gold motors with the gold ESC with the flight controller so I'll be doing that video which should help some people who are interested in the flywheel brand and um, yeah let me know what you guys think down in the comment section these were the results uh, the efficiency the official efficiency test will be once we go fly and obviously record all the amperage data and just see the overall performance and this might be my toothpick motor testing quad but I think it's too heavy to do that so what I'm thinking of doing is possibly designing my own on the uh, CNC machine or Fusion 360 and then uh, I'll even share that design with you guys. And uh, what I want to do is with my toothpick design, I want to make it into dead cat style. I don't like dead cat, but the reason why I want to do that is I want to get the props out of the shot so we'll be able to record really nice uh, uh, HD footage on like a Cadex on like the, because the Cadex is dropping in price now because we have the run cam split three and all these coming out 
and the nano's on the way i have the run cam split 3 nano on the way which is going to be really great for these little micro for these little toothpicks slash micros and um i'm really excited to uh, actually do that so i'll do that frame design it share it with you guys and um yeah and we could do the video of me cutting it maybe depending on your guys interest let me know if you guys would be interested in that and i'm gonna leave it at that guys everything's linked down below if you could check those out those greatly support the channel and if you guys have any questions or any suggestions feel free to let me know and i'll see you in the next one peace out guys